Well, you can see some activity going on behind me. We've had quite a morning. Uh, we're here with Caden, who's been uh, chasing this buck for three days now. We're calling him Try Try. I'm going to tell you his story today on the Great Outdoors with Brian Kinghorn. Welcome to another episode of The Great Outdoors with Brian Kinghorn. give you a little context about where we are. It's kind of a rough windy day today. It's cold, but I needed to give you a little bit of the rest of the story for what's going on in today's episode of The Great Outdoors with Brian Keyboard. This is the Teton River Canyon. About 500 yards to my right here to the west is the remains of the Teton Dam. Infamous because of its failure, June 5th, 1976. 11 people were killed in the flood that resulted from that. Thousands and thousands, including us, were left without a home. And for me growing up, that's what this place was all about, where the dam was. And kind of a negative memory, if you will, until this last week. Now I've got something else to associate with this area and give me some good things to think about. This story really begins back in this year when my little brother Mike and his boys put in for some light hunts, some special hunts. Both of his boys drew the Island Park tag for any bull elk. Unfortunately that hunt didn't go like they wanted. In fact they ended up seeing more deer than they did elk. But that's a good omen because Cade also drew for the late November hunt in Unit 62, this area up here around the Teton River. That's during the middle of the rut. There's no better time to hunt. Mike and Caden and Coulter all live in 
Boise way too far to spend much time scouting up here. But I'm just 15 minutes away. And so, starting the first part of November, after work some after some evenings, I drive out here and see if I can find any deer. Um, in fact, several times I brought my dad with me. had a great time. And boy, have we ever seen that. hundreds and hundreds of deer over the last several weeks. November 18th, dad was with me just a little further east of here, about a couple hundred yards. And we saw a very large, non-typical buck. Seven points on one side, five on the other. Uh, big body. Uh, thick antlers. It wasn't super wide. But he was tall. Really a pretty buck. Took some pictures of it and said to Mike, and Mike said, that's our target here. Well, no pressure on the guide. How do you help find, you know, one animal that you've seen once? But, um, as it turns out, when, we, when Mike got here this last week, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, that evening, we found that buck. We weren't able to get a shot. Uh, at least we knew he was a next morning, we came back to that same general area. We had some information that he likes to spend the day, the evenings out in the fields, and then just before sunup, would head down to the steep canyon that he would bed in for the day. And sure enough, that's where he was. We had to hurry, but Cave was able to get one shot off. Just as he pulled the trigger, the deer moved, and um, Cave headed a little further back than he wanted. He went over the edge. We. Uh, Worked our way over there looking for him, couldn't see him anywhere. Mike and Kate went around to see if they'd see maybe back down to the canyon. Didn't see him anywhere, but while they were doing that, I saw him walk across the other side. And he was, had some blood on his, his rump. Uh, but he was moving fine, it was evident he had just been kind of grazed, if you will. Uh, but in the area still. We came back that evening, didn't see him, saw a lot of other deer, including Strongest deer I've ever seen. He uh, caught up after falling over, being knocked over, ran to the edge and went down the Teton Canyon. This is a deep canyon. You probably can't see it from here, but we're we're talking probably six to seven hundred feet elevation change and steep as all get out. Well, that's where I'm super proud of Kate and his dad. When that deer went over, they spent the next hours tracking, trailing, and eventually being able to get that deer and finish him off. It wasn't the bottom of the canyon, but we got him out. Very cool. So now, I've got a great memory of this area. And always will. We'll bring more people up here. This is a great place to experience the great outdoors. With Brian Keyhorn. To everyone in our great outdoor family, you may be feeling a little cooped up, but don't forget, there are still rocks to be skipped, trails to be trampled, fish to be caught. The great outdoors are wide open and they're calling us like never before. In these trying times, we need nature more than ever. We need nature to remind us that like a sunrise or the turning of the tides, these challenges will pass. We need nature to help us heal and reconnect with the ones we love the most. So when you can, get back to nature. Get back to each other. We're here for you. What's we got here, Cade? Right here. 
it's not just any deer. Try, try. This is try, try. Go ahead and uh, get down and lift his head up, will you? Wow, now that's a buck. Way to go. Get in there, proud papa. Yeah, real proud of Cade. Real proud of his patience. I'm not giving up on it. Well, then you guys did. We, we were clear up at the top of that. Well, Bryce spotted him a week and a half ago, and Kate saw him take a shot when? Tuesday? Tuesday night. What do you think, Cade? What? What do you think? Fun? <laughs> Absolutely. Fun? Okay, go ahead. Okay. And then November 24th, so find the 24. Yep. Nice Happy job. Thanksgiving. 